All right, uh, we are recording. I'm gonna pull up my screen. Share screen. Okay. So today we're diving into the E Jing Jing and uh, Damo's Muscle Changing Classic because we have a new practice this semester. And uh, I want to give you the history, the story, and the theory behind it, so you can share it. Uh, you know, because the transmission is inside of the story, inside of the history. So remember where it comes from, and we never forget. And uh, so we're going diving into some of the classics here today. Um, and a lot of this material actually comes from a book called the uh, Qigong: The Secrets of Youth by Dr. Yang Jingming. Um, and I actually have. Um, for those of you, remember we have Vimify going, so those of you who have the uh, high participation, y'all are gonna get a copy of this book, okay? Um, so just know that. Um, and so I've been geeking on, out on that all summer. It's been really phenomenal. Um, oh, it's on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, here we go. So this class, going into the Yijing Jing, Fascia, Qi, Brief History, hard, and what hard style Qigong is. A deeper understanding of the fascia so we're going to geek out on some western uh, science um and uh, you know really it's the conduit for the 12 primary channels uh diving into the fascial adhesions chi blockages uh and those being very similar in a sense um and diving into what that kind of means and how to begin to um find that in our own being and then begin to find that inside of the people that we work with and uh, and then we're going to do a, a, a special awareness meditation to kind of ground in all of the all of the headiness that we're going to dive into right now. All right, yeah, let me play it for big. Sorry, y'all. Okay. Um, so the roots of Yi Jing Jing, Yi in this context means to change or alter. Jin means muscle tendons. And the Jing means classic or Bible. So it translates as muscle tendon changing classic. And two of the primary sources of this style of training, one is Hua To, who was a physician and Taoist alchemist who created the five element form. So initially the five element form was, was really just for a, a created as a healing art. Um, and then the kind of the second iteration of this came from Da Mo, which is the, uh, the Chinese name for Bodhidharma. And Bodhidharma, uh, Bodhi means wisdom, and Dharma is the teaching. So in the, some of the classical texts, uh, Da Mo is considered the ancestor of Zen Buddhism, which in China is called Chan. Um, and he's kind of the father of the Shaolin Monastery. Um, and I always love reading this, this Quote, I don't know what, what Dallas is from, but, uh, you know, 50% of enlightenment is posture. So when we do our practices and we align our posture, we change and alter our ligaments and tendons, making them stronger, increasing the bandwidth, allowing more chi to flow through. Now we have higher capacity, right? And it's easier to stay in an awakened state when our body is fluid and open and strong. So Yi Jing Jing, I've discovered, you know, when I was first studying, I was, I was, it can be confusing, you know, studying these arts. There's all these styles of Qigong, and so over time, I've been, I've been seeing, like, what's the essence, right? So Yi Jing Jing, there is a 12-movement Yi Jing Jing form, and I've done about three different ones, because I really was like, I want to learn this, but it never really resonated with me. It was hard to remember. It wasn't. So I was like, oh, eating Jing, muscle tendon Jing and plastics are a more broad spectrum, right, of using harder style stretching and strengthening, right, to clear stagnation. I want to go over the purposes in a moment of eating Jing. Um, but I wanted to just kind of help you guys frame it in your mind, right? So Qigong hard style, eating Jing. Right, we talk about hard style, it's Yi Jing Jing. Muscle tendon changing classic starts to look more like Taoist yoga, right? But then the um, 
look, I will stop there because I have some slides and then I'm gonna dive into more of this. So when we talk about uh, Qigong, we have Nei Dan or Nei Gong, which is the internal cultivation or internal Kung Fu. And the three primary arts that have been really works through the last you know, thousand years, the three are Tai Chi, which is like the sister of Qigong, Xing Yi, and Bagua, okay? So at some point, as we build out the academy, you know, um, I'm gonna have people who are masters in Tai Chi that can help, because I wanna learn some Tai Chi. I, I had a form back in the day, but uh, it, it got lost. It was in my muscle memory, and once you stop practicing, man, those forms, they start to disappear. So um, I'm actually gonna have uh, either Kai or Gray teach us uh, the Wu style Tai Chi form down the road, right? So these practices are, there's, they're codes, right? They unlock things inside of our being and there's patterns, universal patterns that we begin to understand inside of you. And we can't train them all at once, right? Um, so that's Nei Gong, internal Kung Fu. Um, and the internal practices traditionally are Taoist. The Taoist went from inside out. Remember this, Taoists went from inside out. So they began with meditation, they began with these subtle movements, and then it moved to more hard style qigong. Now, wei dan or wei gong, wei, as you guys know, means external, right? Our wei qi field, so wei means external. And the external style kung fu are Shaolin, which is where the yi jing jing comes from, taekwondo, uh, what I believe is Korean, karate, you know, judo, right? These are different forms of external. Some may have a little internal cultivation, but um, you know, they're primarily focused on strengthening the body, you know, and, and so forth, um, increasing martial power. Now this cool image, can you guys see this little image, these five animals here? Can you guys see that decently? I know you can't read it, but I just wanted you to just take a look at this here, okay? Because we're doing the new Yi Jing Jing form, and it's based on some of these animals, which will help you to remember them, help you to remember the essence and the qualities, um, and allow a, just a deeper transmission of, of, of the movement patterns, okay, and the, the, the systems that we're working with. Uh, and on our Sunday classes, we'll dive way deep into that and the movements and the organ systems and all that, so don't worry about any of that right now. I just want you to kind of take a snapshot and see these different, these different forms, okay? And uh, Michael just finished um, editing and filming. It's about a six minute um, modern Yi Jing Jing. It goes in the flow and it has uh, every one of these animals except for the snake. Um, and, uh, but, you know, I have a different name for it, so it's okay. All right, here we go. So now that you had, see the kind of the broad stroke, like Yi Jing Jing, fascia training. So that's what it is in essence. The fascia is the uh, connective tissue, the, um, we're going to go into that, so I can, I can stop. That's not to get in myself. Um, Okay, it looks like maybe somebody has a question. Oh, Catherine, uh, don't worry, I'm gonna be repeating myself here. We're gonna go deep into the fascia here in just a moment, but to get more into the classics. So you see this, oops, sorry about that. This picture here, this is the oldest um, painting uh, from 168 BC um, called Daoyan, which you guys know means leading and guiding. Okay, and um, inside of this, this is where a lot of the Qigong forms and things have, have come from. Um, so it's so important just to share that so you can feel you know, the, the history behind it. And it wasn't until 1973 that this was really unearthed and kind of brought back into the forefront. So now moving to, uh, to Damo, uh, a living Buddha or Bodhisattva. And I'm curious, how many of you know the term Bodhisattva? You guys have heard that term before, yeah. I can see most of y'all's hands. Uh, so in a nutshell, a bodhisattva is a Buddha or awakened being that has decided to stay here on earth to continue the teachings. 
uh, instead of leaving this earth plane and going on to nirvana and the next levels, it's like a graduation, right? So, okay, I've done all my work. Now we're going to graduate to the next level. So the Bodhisattva, and I believe I, I'm a reincarnated Bodhisattva. I feel many of you are, and we're here dedicated to continue teaching these ways for the healing of, of, of all beings, you know. So the uh, two classics, the two classics that Da Mo uh, wrote, um, it was that he was in 527 AD, um, he, he, he came and he spent many years at the Shaolin Temple. And the two classics before he passed on, and the story goes that he spent nine years in meditation at the Shaolin Temple. Um, and upon becoming a Buddha, then wrote these classics inside of that and then put it in a, in a sacred little box, sealed it up, you know, and then it was inside of his wall. And actually in the Shaolin Temple is his cave where he meditated. And they say you can actually see the imprint on the rock where he meditated. He was there for nine years. Um, so maybe someday we can all go there, who knows. And uh, so these were the classics that he left, the I Jing Jing. And the first goal in your, uh, of your training in, for enlightenment, strengthen the body, build chi. Right. Second, once you build the chi, now you use that energy, you nourish the marrow, nourish the spine, nourish the brain to achieve that you know, full enlightened state. So I really loved when I looked at this and I started to read it. I was like, oh, it simplifies everything. Thank you. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, like, let's strengthen the body and then let's meditate and align our spine and become one again. So this way you begin to see the template and you won't get lost inside of this form and the white crane form and that form is like, what's the essence? Is the essence filled with heart? Is it filled with love? Is the teacher joyous? You know, I was reading some of Dr. Johnson's work again and uh, he said three things. He was like, you know, when, when you're around a teacher or a master, are they filled with gratitude? Are they filled with joy? Are they filled with happiness? Those three things, okay. I'll, 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 I'll allow myself to, 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 to receive the transmission. You know? If not, these teachers, they have not mastered themselves. They've only mastered skills. We are not here to simply master skills. We're here to master ourselves. You know, I don't want to train with somebody who's angry but can blow shit up with chi. I don't care about all that. You know what I'm saying? So, if you guys have any questions that I go along here, you can just, you know, ping me in the chat or something because um, I'm just going to keep rolling, okay? So these little images here, uh, these are the, basically the 12 primary classic I Ching Jing. And when you look at it, there's always a slight variation because um, nobody fully knows the, what the true form was. You know, it wasn't until about 500 years later that somebody was like, oh, here's the, let me try to re, um, re what's the word I'm looking for? No, nah, it doesn't matter. Here we go. Let's keep going. All right. Uh, so more on Damo, Bodhidharma. So came, he was invited by Emperor Liang Wu uh, because Buddhism started to, to gather a lot of um, uh, uh, richness. And, and, and so basically the Damo was an Indian prince invited to teach on Buddhist philosophy and essentially brought yoga to China. Okay, brought yoga to China. Um, and both early Buddhists and Taoists emphasized spiritual cultivation and typically it ignored physical Qigong training because they felt the physical body was temporary and a distraction. So they were like, well, why do I want to focus on the physical body when I want to achieve oneness? So I'm just going to be an aesthetic. You know, I'm going to fast so I can keep my vessel very clear and I'm going to meditate for long hours. So when he showed up, his teachings were not readily accepted by the, say, the ruling class. Right? He, was, he was kind of a modern spiritual rebel. He was like, hey, y'all, you guys are falling asleep in meditation. You're weak. You're sickly. We have to strengthen your body. 
we have to clear the stagnation from sitting so much. And as we awaken the chi in your body, we'll awaken the mind. You'll have stronger immune system. You'll have stronger uh, focus. Right? At the end of the day, it was all about allowing the consciousness to direct the chi. And then as the chi is directed, now we can move that chi through the channel. Right? But if we don't flex the body and stretch the body, then we're just visualizing and that's only half the, the, the equation. Okay, so the juicy stuff. The purpose of Yi Jing Qi Gong is used as the first step to reach enlightenment. Okay, got to be thematic, got to be in our body. And it's to strengthen muscles, ligaments, tendons, fascia, and even bone. So a lot of the Yi Jing Jing practices also have tapping. And I'll bring it to our next retreat um, with bamboo or wood or uh, steel which remember the, the piezoelectricity we've always been talking about, we're gonna dive into that more. It helps to build that quad quality of electric energy inside the body as well as purging stagnation, which is why we do a lot of tapping and rubbing and so forth. So the second is the purpose is to increase the chi storage and circulation in the governing and conception vessels, which is also called small circulation. It's also called microcosmic orbit, which we will be doing more so this semester. Because y'all have built a pretty good amount of chi, and um, so now we're gonna start to, to open those channels, the front and back channels. Third is to eliminate stagnation in the 12 primary channels. So that's why things like yoga are such an integral part of cultivation. So inside of this practice that um, you guys are going to be, I'm really excited for you guys to play with it and practice with it because it's got some of that yang, chi, you know, that strengthening the muscles, but it also has a lot of opening. You'll feel like stretched and like a badass at the same time. And then the last is to strengthen the guardian chi or the wei chi in the immune system. And all of this is is, is essentially preparation, but integral to the the eventually the you know moving the energy up the spine into the brain in the it's called the marrow and brainwashing which we are not going to get into this semester all right cool here we go so i've been reading an amazing book i told you all about um, called the spark in the machine this guy, Daniel Keon, is a Western MD as well as an acupuncturist. And I just really found his work to be very valuable for us as practitioners to help people understand and bridge the gap between the mystery of chi and the modern science of fascia. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of read down this little list and keep things simple. Um, so fascia um, is Latin for bands together. Okay, so when I think about fascia, it's like all these giant rubber bands that stretch and pull and compress, right? And every nerve, muscle, blood vessel, organ, bone, and tendon is covered in it. Right? You think about like this, this, this web, this, uh, this wrapping, right? And it is primarily made of collagen. Collagen, which is piezoelectric. What is piezoelectricity? It's a Greek word. Piezo means pressure. Okay, so under pressure of any kind, an electric current or a bioelectric current is produced, which is why after you stretch even for five minutes, you feel like you have more chi. Or you do push ups or squats for a minute, you're like, wow, I feel like I have more energy. Because you do. And then collagen is a Latin word. Kala means blue. And gen stands for genesis, the creator. Okay, so the collagen and uh, one other point of collagen, in order for the collagen to be healthy and pliable, that's a beautiful word, pliable, right? We have to have one, hydration, which is quite obvious. And two is vitamin C. Vitamin C is, is paramount in the, the, uh, the, the strength of collagen. And we're going to get, dive in, in deeper into collagen later in this um, class here. So fascia connects organs, 
to muscle, to spine, to nerves, and it surrounds the bone and underpins the skin. So in this moment, um, yeah, I just gotta stop this for a moment. So I can shrink this and then go back to this. I see somebody may have had a question. I'll get to you in just a moment. Um, so you see to the right here, um, so here's a, a really nice picture. I was searching the web to really find the best one. Superficial fascia, okay, is that first layer you see, which is like the adipose tissue. You see that first layer, right? And so it's just under the skin. So it's like our whole body is wrapped in this liquid matrix collagen, which when it's healthy and pliable, we're strong. When it becomes brittle from lack of movement or lack of um, quality nutrition, right? Or some kind of disease, the collagen becomes hard, brittle, um, and that creates stagnation of blood and energy. Now you see in blue the deep fascia, uh, <clears throat> which is found between adjacent muscles. Okay, so they're woven. Think of it like 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 a like a web. So it's woven inside every little muscle fiber. And then I'm actually going to play you a very short little. It's a three minute clip, and I think it's going to help you really understand fascia to a greater degree because it's magical really the values are so magical okay so we have the superficial layer between the skin and the muscles which is the one that we can feel when we're stretching right so even in this moment we're all sitting here we're just round the spine like a cobra hood kind of tuck the chin feel the fascia on the upper back you know and then open the heart pull the shoulders back and kind of look to the sky feel the fascia on the front side right so when we were doing that dry crying exercise from last week, right, opening all the fascia on the front side of the body, front arm lines, chest, lungs, intercostals, even to some of the psoas. Right? So just as we keep talking about this, feel free to move your bodies to allow things to sink in, okay? So I am now going to shift and play this very short little video um, that is quite fascinating. Yes, Brother Greg, Yogananda said yoga is to prepare for meditation. Indeed. The, the, the Taoists and the yogis all, you know, are talking the same language. All right, here you go. And if you can't see the screen, please say something. Uh, just let me know. So here we go. Watch with your whole being. David, I can't see anything. Okay. Thank you, thank you. So it's not showing. Let me, uh, hmm, interesting. Let's see, how do we do that? I Maybe. think I know what it is. Okay. Because I'm sharing my screen, right? Can y'all see me talking I think, I think you're sharing. Right I think you're sharing a window. Oh, and not yes. Your screen. You, oh, yes. 100%. Yes, thank you. Boom. You guys are on it. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, we got David coming in. Boom. There it is. Y'all got my back. Okay, here we go. So this is fascia magnified 25 times. Okay, so here we go.
One more minute. Okay. Boom. Okay, now we uh, will... That was fascinating. Pretty wow, right? What'd y'all think? Holy shit. <laughs> I can't believe that's, that's in my body. Oh, I know, right? That's like the answer. It's like most of fitness training, like it doesn't even address this. It's mostly about, you know, train your muscles, you know, do... But like, if you yeah. don't address the fascia through thing, you know, then you're like shooting yourself in the foot. <laughs> like you're just yeah. not even, you're like pushing a boulder with a little toothpick, you know? Yeah. A hundred percent. So, um, when, thank you guys. You know, I, I got all fired up when I saw that. I was like, oh, I'm such a nerd. This is great. Now what, what, why this is helpful is because as medical Qigong practitioners or a practitioner of any kind, if you're prescribing a movement and exercise, you can begin to explain it with a little bit more science say, Hey, when we do this, you've got this issue we're finding. So maybe it's an emotional thing or maybe it's a mental thing. Well, well, how does that connect to doing this liver movement? What the fuck? It's like, Oh, because the chi is stagnant. It's stuck. The blood isn't moving. The belief system, the pattern has created this reality because of whatever, right? So we begin to move the fascia, which innervates the blood, which innervates the organ systems. Now we free up that stagnant energy so we can feel again. And then maybe some memories come up or not. Maybe some emotions come up. And some of the feedback I've gotten from people who are doing Qigong and Qigong class, like, wow, I got really emotional. Wow, is that normal to have tears? Like, that's normal. That's good. Cool. We're beginning to free up that stagnation, you know, that emotion or trauma that's stuck in the body. And um, it allows you to then help them see the, the connection between the practice and why it's going to be good for them um, on a very simple level. Is that all helpful? Yeah, all making clear sense? And it's just fun to see that, right? It's like fiber optics, a fashion fiber optics. Okay, uh, we are going to move on. Let's see. Oh, Catherine has, you said you have a cool fuzz speech video. Maybe share that inside of the, um, uh, the Facebook group. And then we can, I can plug that into our Vimify or something and have a reminder to check that video out. All right. Moving along. Let me share my screen again. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so fascia is extremely strong and impenetrable to almost all biological substances. So the fascia, what's fascinating is even though uh, Western science doesn't really pay too much attention to fascia, they're like, oh yeah, fascia is there to help us compartmentalize the organ system so we know where to cut for surgery. And I was like, what? So I just gotta stop this one. So inside, I'm gonna put this here. So this, this kind of blew my mind. When, um, speak your view. I didn't know this. Uh, Okay, so modern surgeons, right, they cut along the fascial band. So that's why people can go and have surgery inside their belly or their heart, and they're not bleeding everywhere because every organ is wrapped in fascia, like vacuum sealed. So they're like, oh, let's move this organ out of the way. Let's move this organ out of the way. And then we'll cut right along that fascial line and band to get to exactly where we need to go. So I never understood how people could do heart surgery at night. Not, no. I was like, I don't, I don't get it. But now I'm starting to see how they can begin to uh, orchestrate. But really, that's kind of like <laughs> just all they have to say about fascia. <laughs> until now, until now, there's a lot more research coming out. And um, so it's, pretty, it's a pretty exciting time to be alive. Okay, pretty fired about this. Now we'll go back to sharing. Boom, bang, bang, boom. All right. 
Uh, everything slides down fascia, water, blood, pus, and even electricity. It is both an electrical conductor. Okay, remember this. It is both an electrical conductor, a resistor, but it also generates its own electricity, right? It's also an insulator. I mean, it's got so many properties, but it's not just one of them, okay? And I remember um, uh, my first uh, Qigong uh, master, Master Peter, he said, you know, muscles are only insulation for qi, only insulation for qi. So as we begin to build our muscles, what happens in a, in a very simple way is we produce more mitochondria, which is the powerhouse of the cell. Okay, the powerhouse of the cell. I don't have a picture of this for you guys right here. But um, the cell basically begins to produce a higher amount of what's called ATP. ATP is the most important energy inside of the cell, inside of what's called the mitochondria. So when you build muscle, you build mitochondria, you build mitochondria, you build stronger, thicker muscle fibers, and in turn, you build stronger, uh, more pliable fascia, but not necessarily depending on what your movement practice is. Okay, so it's like when we try to pin down what chi is, chi is intelligent energy, and it has an inner knowing, and that chi, that bioelectricity, will move and act in accordance to what area of the body is. Like the cells inside of the liver know what to do, which are very different from the spleen, which are very different from the brain, right? Which are very different from the stomach and very different from the knee joint, right? So the chi is intelligent, which is why in qigong there's like 50 kinds of chi, right? And we'll, we'll continue to dive into those, those types of chi um, in, in this semester. Um, but right now we're geeking out on the fascia. Okay. Uh, okay, so fascia is like a pliable web, right? And we kind of covered this, but I just wanted you to see another picture. Um, so look down in the bottom, it says A, right? Loose connective tissue under the skin, okay? That's the first web. Then look at B, the fibrous connective tissue, which form tendons. And tendons connect um, muscle to muscle and uh, ligaments connect muscle to bone. Okay? And from B, you go to C, the adipose tissue. Right? So that is, another, is also wrapped in fascia. And then from C, you go to D, the cartilage at the end of each bone. And they found that the, the fascia can become hardened over time based on the movement pattern. So somebody who's a fighter, as an example, right, they find when they go under the x-ray and these, these now modern uh, um, imaging, the bones are actually thicker at certain areas where they're striking, right? So it actually has a higher ability to, to generate chi, okay? And then when you go to E, you see the bone, right? And inside the bone are also um, a group of, se of, of semi-crystalline structure, okay? And that is also piezoelectric. The bones also have a, a very slight pliable quality. Then the last is the blood. And so in Qigong, we talk about the marrow washing. The inside of the bone marrow, inside of the bone marrow exists the red blood cells and the white blood cells. So when we do these practices, when we talk about building blood, it's actually scientific. When we do these movements, the red blood cells uh, have a greater capacity, right, to give off energy in exchange, gaseous exchange, which allows uh, greater healing, right? So when we look at people who are in a dis-ease state, the blood is too acidic. And I'm just going to stop the share for a moment so I can use my hand. So they found that the blood in an acidic state becomes very clumpy and like, like stuck, right? And what happens when you don't move for a couple of days? You feel like, ugh, stuck, right? Same thing happens to the blood. You know, you know? Then we do sumo, we do some breath practice. We do that with me right now. Just take a few breaths. Just feel those cells, right? Expanding, being filled with light. We're breathing actually directly into the blood vessels themselves. So do one more breath and then hold it for a moment. Hold it, increasing the amount of time the blood has to exchange itself. So our lungs are pressing up against the arterial walls right now. 
And as you begin to exhale slow, feeling that exchange of energy happening right now in this moment, feeling that rush, that tingling. So a part of becoming, uh, you know, self-mastery is learning that at any moment we have the tools to reground, to recenter, and give these tools to somebody else. Like, hey, if you're in a funk, man, stop sitting like a <laughs> crouched over for all day. Like, get up, move your body. You know, set an alarm every couple hours. You know, because I know some of y'all, you know, you, you work with people and they have death jobs. You know, it's like, hey, th there's no excuse for not allowing yourself even a minute, even a minute of breath work and mindfulness or stretching, you know, just, you can do, you know, there's so much you want to do seated, man. It's ridiculous, you know? So, okay, moving on. Share the screen. Do, do, do. Play. Okay. So the areas of greatest tension inside of the body builds thicker bands of fascia. Or cheek. So I, I just love this image because you can see all of the muscles and really begin to get a great picture of these bands that move through our being, which are actually, there, there's six primary fascial bands and there's 12 primary meridians. And that's fascinating, right? The yin and the yang, there's six bands and you have six yin channels, six yang channels, pretty cool. So when you're doing your practice and you're closing your eyes, begin to with your inner vision, the, the chi moving through the, the cells, the, the fascia, the muscles, and it will allow an even, even deeper connection to the practices, okay? And here's a couple cool images I found. So on the top, it shows the six primary fascial bands. Um, there's a, a superficial back line, which is basically uh, bladder meridian, the superficial front line, which is a number of meridians, liver, stomach, spleen, um, and you can see that's the second image. The third image is the lateral line, right? And along the lateral line, you also have heart, um, you have the other uh, small intestine. And then of course, when you were doing those Qigong movements, right, we're squeezing the organs on either side. Then you have the spiral line, which is, which is very, very important. And we're going to cover this when we go to retreat, is I'm going to teach y'all how to begin to observe people's walking, okay? It's a part of, uh, it's one of our diagnostic skills and tool sets. Right? Because when you can see somebody walking, you can see, wow, they hold a ton of tension in their shoulder or their hip or something's not looking quite right. Um, so when we begin to address the physical body, we know, oh, well, that matches what I found on the table or it matches what I saw uh, when, I was, when I was reading their auric field from a distance, right? And then now they're in person, I can begin to, to read these, these more subtle um, patterns, okay? Uh, and then we have the arm lines, front and back arm lines, and the deep front line is called the psoas, which is the only muscle, and it's a big, very thick band of fascia that connects the top half to the bottom half of the body, essentially the spine that connects into the hips. There's only one muscle and that's the psoas. And which those of you who have done some deep work, if you have had that massage, you know, they have to go very deep underneath uh, and through the organs and it can be quite uh, uncomfortable or painful. Um, so when we do, oh nice, thank you, whoever did that little circle there, that's very nice. I don't have a tablet that can do that. Thank you for whoever did that. So, <laughs> that was me. I didn't even know we could do that, but there's this pencil. I'm on mobile and there's a little pen in the bottom left. Nice. And I just wanted to take a screenshot, so I circled it. Oh, annotate. Oh, maybe I, you can see I'm learning new things all the time. Okay, happy face. <laughs> uh, and then below, you kind of see the different channels and how they connect. So um, it's, it's going to be very helpful in learning the meridian and allowing you, when you're working with people, know that you don't need to, to know the channels per se. You just go, where is spirit guiding me? Oh, I'm guided to their hip. Okay. May I, may I touch your hip? Okay. And then may I palpate? Okay. Touch, right? Or maybe you're in more of a coaching session and you kind of hit a stuck spot. You hit something that, ooh, there's something here. Okay, let's pause, let's breathe. Where do you feel it? 
coming up for you with emotion. Okay, feel it. Touch your body. Where are you feeling it? Right? And then you can ask, do you mind if I put my hands on you? You know, and then you can, you can go soft or you can go deep, you know, depending on what the situation is called for. Um, I feel like just stopping a second. Talk to your own seeds. So when you're with somebody, it's like, I, I, it, it, there's a higher intelligence that orchestrates this. So I'm going to trust that. I'm with my hand wherever it needs to be. And then inside of that, you allow, because you've been training, like, wow, I know that the low back is the kidneys. And I know that there's fear connected there. And I know that's where we store shock and trauma, right? Then you start to make the connections and, and begin to see, you know, like, oh, wow, I'm on their IT band. Wow, there's a lot of like stuckness on, on, the, on the leg and the hip. Oh, that's connected to the gallbladder channel, which is the liver. And it's the descending channel going down into the earth. So if those channels are tight on a physical level, which most people are, then the chi is not descending down into the earth. It's unable to root. So they're just like, you know, they're just, they're just walking and it's like they're, they're not plugged in. But as we open those outside leg channels, helping clear the anger or the resentment or whatever the case may be, uh, now I can be charged and let all of that resentment or all of that stuff I've been storing now has an avenue. Like the path is now open for that energy to move. Okay. So we can do all of the psycho-emotional stuff we want inside of the head and inside of our are speaking and it's gonna you're gonna see shifts of course but if you can attune to the physical body as well it's like well let's clear the dam let's like move some of the stagnation and let let that do its work as well you know so we empower them say hey you know if you're gonna work with me you're gonna be asked to do a homework assignment give them one movement you know or one one thing keep it light so they can begin to integrate it into their life okay um and and then it's like you check in next week okay let's check in how you doing how was your practice What's coming up? What did you observe? Okay, somebody, yeah, me, thank you. Okay, we're almost done here with this, these particular um, slides. Let's see where we're at here. Okay, yep, just a couple more, and then we're gonna get into our, our meditation here. So, you guys can see my screen, yeah? So what is a fascial adhesion? So if you look to the left, you see the top two pictures. This is injured tissue. So you can see how it's kind of gnarled. Um, and then below that, the bottom two pictures on the left-hand side are healing tissue. So you can see in the left, bottom left picture, you can see the fibers are becoming more in alignment. And then on the right, same thing, right? If you look at the top right and the bottom right, the fibers are beginning to align, which allows more coherence, more energy flow. So these are these the, the four pictures to the left. Now, if you look to the far, far right, on the top, you see a picture of what would be old or damaged fascia. And you can see where the bone and the muscle fibers are connecting. That fascia there is, is clumped, right? It's hard, it's dry, it's stuck. Then beneath that, you see normal or pliable fascia. Look how much space is between the bone and the muscle fibers. Right, you see that length? So when we do our Qigong practice, and when we do the Yi Jing Jing animal form, which you guys will start this week, just remember those things as you're going through these movements, that stretching is happening not only in our muscles, but also deep, deep inside. So we're naturally beginning to clear some of the stagnation that we might be uh, experiencing. So piezoelectricity. Uh, we'll dive deeper into it for a moment. And, and under pressure, okay, under pressure, the fascia and the bones create bioelectricity. The piezo means pressure. And now, pressure can be done in a number of ways. So if you look to the left, you see it can be the compression. So this is actually the picture of a sponge. And if you were to try to get the water out of a sponge, what are the ways you can do that? You can compress it, right? You can create tension or tensile where you could pull it apart. You could also do torsion. Right? You could wring it out, which is what I'm doing in this picture, which is uh, the dragon movement. Okay? Which be, and primarily because in that movement, we're squeezing through the liver and the animal for the liver is the dragon. And we're opening up the gallbladder channels 
on the outside of the legs there, okay, the glute, the glute medius. And the last one would be, would be shearing, which would be kind of the, the filament sliding, right? You would, you would pull the top and the bottom and kind of slide the, the, the fascia or the, the sponge. So it's important to expand our perspective of what pressure means right here. And you know, that's what helps build a strong body and an open body. Okay, last little geeky slide here, collagen. <clears throat> we discussed, <laughs> it's a Greek word, <clears throat> essentially meaning glue creator or glue genesis. And per weight, it is as strong as steel. In a lot of the martial arts training um, and hard style qigong training, they talk about the iron shirt or the steel body. And now I'm like, oh, like, they didn't know about the collagen, but they know that they could train it to be like steel through physical practice and through internal practice as well. So it's actually, they are building an abundance of chi in the organs that then protect the organs when they're fighting. That begins to overflow lower dantian and naturally begins to move up through the central channel. Uh, and we discussed areas of greatest tension in the body, lay thicker bands of fascia, great tensile strength. And what is tensile strength? It's the existence of a material to breaking under tension. So we begin to challenge our bodies in this way, and we begin to put it under tension, right? And we begin to feel that inside, that tensile strength. So somebody who maybe has, a, 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 and, and the greatest example is bodybuilders, right? You got so much muscle, but then you try to put them on a basketball court, and they're miserable. They can't even play a goddamn sport because they're so big. Right? They don't have that functional muscle. They don't have flexibility. Right? But if you have somebody, maybe they're kind of skinny, but they've got that tensile strength. You know, and that martial arts dude will whoop up on that bodybuilder real quick, you know, or whatever the case may be. And, you know, bodybuilding is cool, but you just got to find that balance. Right? It's like, so anyhow, <clears throat> uh, collagen is a type of protein that is a triple helix semi crystalline structure. Right? We are crystalline in nature period. We are crystalline in nature. And, and continue to remember that as we practice, to feel that quality. Um, so we've discussed actually some of these properties already. Vitamin C is important. Um, collagen is an electrical producer. Um, it also is a semiconductor, uh, insulator, and so forth. Um, and these are the same properties that give our computers intelligence, right? Those fiber optics. Uh, and kind of the last quote, this is from uh, The Spark in the Machine. An electrical force held in a fabric into which our body is woven. This science is beginning to sound like Chinese medicine and qi. And qi is the fabric of energy that connects all of life and all of creation. And it's just a matter of density, right? Low vibration, high vibration, areas of low pressure, Right, and so I'm just going to stop the share and, and explain one more little topic before we go into our meditation here. <clears throat> okay, how y'all doing? You good? I'm talking real fast. I have a I had a year of mate. I was like getting tired, so I'm a little bit like woo. <laughs> um, uh, where was I going? What, what was I going to talk about? Mm. Take a deep breath, grounding in. Letting everything that was just been spoken and just kind of let it sit in here for a moment. And it all permeate. But so the last thing I want to share, um, the, so when we're doing medical Qigong treatments, right, fascial adhesions are Qi blockages, but not all Qi blockages are fascial adhesions, right? Qi blockage may just be a mental, emotional thing, right? So, but trust that when you're working with people, whatever the case may be, you're going to be able to find and uh, allow, um, 
the sensing hand, right? We work from the Wei Chi field, begin to get closer and closer, and then we're on the physical body. Areas of high pressure and low pressure, right? So nature works in this way too, right? When there's uh, certain levels of pressure, creates rain, creates precipitation, fog, so on and so forth. So we're working inside of the body. And there is an area of what would be called uh, low pressure. So say you're scanning their body, right? And you're like, wow, it feels like very low pressure. There's not much going on. It feels empty, cold, right? Okay, that's a sign that the stagnation is caused from a deficiency. There's a deficiency of energy. It's low pressure, you know? So some of the, the Taoist healers that I've worked with describe the body as mountains and valleys, right? There's kind of this river of energy. So if I'm scanning the body, I'm like, whoa, there's this mountain of energy. It feels like it's a little too much. Well, then the stagnation is from excess. Maybe you feel it frenetic. Maybe you feel it hot, like spiky. Like, okay, this, this is not, not so good. Other times you may feel it's like, okay, there's, there's a, it feels like a high pressure. It's strong, but it's clear. It's like it feels smooth. It feels, it feels healthy. And I'll ask the question, is this, is this a healthy sign of energy? Especially when I'm working on the low back area people tend to have kind of a low pressure in the, in the kidney area because it's our lifestyle, right? We stay up late, too much coffee, too much work, overwork. It tends to be a low pressure. Now, if I feel a high pressure, you know, and there's a lot of heat, and then I'll, I'll, just, I'll ask myself, okay, is this energy um, a, a good energy? Is this, is this a healthful energy? Because I don't want to start pulling stuff out. <laughs> Like, oh, it's too hot. Let me just get rid of that. It's like, oh, wait. Oh, you've been cultivated. Oh, that's the chi from your cultivation. Your kidney chi is full, thick, strong. This is not a bad chi, you know. And so inside of that, when you're working with people, you're going to say, okay, no, this is healthy and strong. Or, wow, this is really hot because your, your, your uh, yang is, is so high, right? And your yin deficient. So sometimes the yin, this is a, a, a keynote, uh, sometimes yin deficiency right, can show up as, as too much heat because they don't have enough yin, enough fluids, enough um, uh, hydration, right, that yin, is, it, it can't contain the chi, so it's just, it's this, 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 this yang rising because the yin holds the, the yang. Does that make sense? Right? Yeah, most question, simple way. Yes. Does a yang yeah, deficiency usually manifest as or can it manifest as coolness or coldness? Yes. Like a lack yes. of circulation? Definitely, yeah. Young deficiency can definitely manifest as, as cold or, or, or dry or empty. You know? and, and that's a really, we're going to continue to dive into yin-yang theory as we go. And that's the most fundamental of yin-yang theory. You know, yang tends to be rising and hot. Yin tends to be cold and kind of contracted. All right. That's all I got to say about that. Thanks for your questions. Anybody else have any questions before we move to our meditation? Um, oh, Adrian, go ahead, brother. Oh, I got to promote you. My bad. Uh, let's see here. What was that? I thought you were already in there like swimmer, bro. Okay, uh, there you go. <laughs> okay, you are promoted. You got a raise, you're promoted. All right. Oh, you're on. Can you hear me? Yep. So I was really fascinated by the fascia video, and I noticed at the end they showed how the fascia can light up. And I was wondering, is that the bioelectricity you were speaking of? When the body is yes. like fascia contents, I was really like, wow, we can light up inside like that, like a little light bulb. That's yeah. fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> it's real. Yeah, it's real. We're light beings for real. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks for your question, Adrian. So that's why we do these practices, to keep building that light for real. Um, and that's why I feel called in our work to go into some of the harder style Qigong because it generates more light, you know? And for a lot of people who are on the spiritual tip, sometimes there's too much focus on the, um, there's just not enough body practice, you know, or people who need healing. It's like, 
if you don't have a movement practice of some kind, how can we expect you to heal? You know what I'm saying? So um, yeah, I'm excited to get to go into some of the harder stuff and um, begin to learn the channel in that way. Okay, now we're going to go back to this picture again because we're going to dive into a, um, a meditation to allow everything to sink into a deeper level. Just love being here, y'all. This is like my favorite stuff. Man. Okay, shit. Oh, my God. My electrical engineering mind is going crazy. Yes. Good. <laughs> oh. Okay. Kino. Shin. Okay. Right. So, wherever you are, sit up nice and tall. And then begin to close your eyes. Feel your crown extend, your shoulders sink. Exhale, letting go. Feel your feet on the earth once again. Allowing our linear mind to take a break. Opening to the wisdom inside. Allowing our subconscious mind to absorb all of this information allowing our body temple, the rhythm of the fascia, to absorb the information. This special meditation is for transforming the three bodies. And there's a version inside of the medical Qigong book, but this is a different version. So we'll begin by bringing our awareness to the skin. We need to breathe in through the skin, opening all the pores. Feeling our way chief here, our guardian chief. As we exhale, feel the energy penetrating the skin, lighting up the skin. The largest organ of our body. Now, as you inhale, feel the chi penetrating through the skin and reaching that first layer of connective tissue. You see all of your fascia lighting up. Connected from head to toe, from shoulders to fingers. That first layer of the webbing. When you inhale, feel this liquid light matrix around the whole body. On the next inhale, begin to gather the chi from the external world, penetrating the skin through that first layer and now into the fibrous connective tissue. Begin to feel the ligaments, the tendons. Begin to feel their thickness, observing them with your inner mind. Getting the fascia from the ankle, connecting the ankle joint, and up to the knees. And then moving from the knees, connecting the fascia up into the hips. Into the joint capsules in the hips. And then moving up into the spine and the shoulders. And as you inhale, take a big inhale, the warrior's breath, and feel the fascia around your ribs. Round your lungs, round your chest, expanding. And as you exhale, feel that energy moving down the arms, the fascia of the shoulders, forearms, elbows, hands. And breathing in from the connective tissue, the ligaments and tendons. You can breathe now directly into the bones. See where the fascia inter innervates the bones, and the nerves. Fascia wraps every nerve. And it wraps from the tendons and the ligaments into the bone. Inhaling, breathing into the bones. Feel the light, the crystals inside of your bones. 
And as you exhale, pack the chi in tighter into the bone marrow. So it's like the space between the bones. Inhaling, absorbing energy through your skin, directly in through the fascia, into the bones. See it light up. And as you exhale, make it brighter and stronger inside the mirror. One more breath, breathing into the bone marrow. Good lighting. And then from the bone marrow, breathe in to the blood cells. The red blood cells and the white blood cells. See them lighting up. Every blood cell filled with this electricity. And as you exhale, allow those blood cells to be brighter and stronger, more spacious. With the plasma inside of the blood. As you breathe in from the blood cells, go into the nucleus of the cell itself where the mitochondria lives, the powerhouse of the cell. Breathing in, feel inside of the cell. And we're using this now as a portal, as a gateway. Continue to dive deeper into the cell like you're flowing into this tube, deeper and deeper inside of the cell. It becomes a portal of like a, like a tiny, tiny sun, the most brilliant point of light. Go inside this point of light. And you're gonna see the unraveling of our DNA. The crystalline helix structure spiraling onto the portal inside of our cell. Connecting the inside of our being. See that point of light now is the sun. It is the grand central sun center of our galaxy. We breathe and feel the expansiveness of the grand central sun inside of us. And begin to feel it outside of you. Feel the expansiveness of the universe inside of you. You connect to your spiritual essence. Connect to your soul spark. Your brilliance, your magic, your uniqueness. You're the gifts of God that have been given to you to share with the world. Do that reconnection to your original blueprint, that starlight, let it begin to interpenetrate every cell, every blood cell in remembrance. We expand from the blood to the bone marrow, in the bone marrow with the remembrance. And filling every bone with light. And breathing from every bone. And once again, to the ligaments and the tendons. Nourishing. Remembering 
from the ligaments and the tendon and then moving to that first layer of fascia wrapping the whole body, wrapping the organ, interconnecting all of the systems. You feel that connecting to your emotional body now in this moment. Feeling the divine intelligence inside every organ, inside of every system, that soul blueprint. Divine blueprint for everything functioning on a higher level, a higher octave here and now. On this next breath, inhaling now, going from the fascia to the skin once again. I'm feeling your pores open, breathing through your skin. As you exhale now, send this energy, you are this brilliant ball of light. Extend it through your Wei Chi field. Physical energy, spiritual body, all three Wei Chi fields filled with this number, this brilliance. Let me bask in this energy of the numbers. And a smile in your heart and a smile through your field out to all creatures, down to the rocks and the soil, out to the trees and the sky and the sun. You are a beacon of light. Remember who you are. When you forget, trust that you will remember again. Remember through your breath. Remember through your posture. When we are ready, let me call it our practice. In the hands, one over the heart, one over the belly. Let's take a few breaths in silence. Massage the belly, massage the heart. Healing our physical, energetic, and spiritual bodies all united. And then begin to gently move, shift, stretch, whatever you need. Ground in. How y'all feeling? Hmm. Thank you. It's interesting because I may have something in mind and then I never know how, quite how the meditation is going to turn out. It just kind of takes on life of its own. But I was, I was like in it. I was like, whoa, this is pretty powerful. What's happening right now? Uh, so we have just a couple minutes. If anybody has any insights you want to share about the meditation or any other questions before we close out, um, now is the time. And just you can unmute yourself. Uh, yeah, I'd like to share an insight. Yeah, I, I, I've been, as all you know, deeply involved in the work of, that Landmark does. And I've been involved in the Next Level Coaches, their group in San Diego. They're deeply involved in the transformative work. And many people will use conversation. It's like you said, David, you know, the most psycho-emotional work does one kind of thing. And we can talk about it all day, but at the end of the the day there's this brain right and it's controlling everything in the body and when we have a thought when we fire when some neuronal pattern fires in the brain it doesn't just live in the brain it goes and it embodies itself through the fascia and by doing this work on the fascia we have the ability to transform ourselves in such a powerful and potent and embodied way i'm so present to the gift that we've been given to share with people that anyone can become anything. They can transform their physicality. They can transform who they are in reality. 
Amen, brother. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Any other, uh, Greg, got some to share, brother? Yeah, go ahead, brother. Oh, you need me to unmute you? Here, I can do it for you. Or is that a no? I just saw your hand doing things. <laughs> okay, no. Okay, my bad. Uh, okay. Oh, yes, Adrian, go ahead, brother. Yeah, I just want to share some amazing realizations I've recently had because um, since we're talking about fascia, I've also, I also study cranial sacral therapy. And in this therapy, we speak a lot about fascia and it's a big focus in our therapy. And um, I just been, I just want to share that I've been seeing like amazing connections between medical Qigong and cranial sacral. It's just, you know, different languages like in cranial sacral, they speak of the midline and medical Qigong is the Taiji pole. And, you know, the three Wei Qi fields, there's like three energy fields too. And, yeah, like in that meditation just helped me go deeper and like feeling the fascia and the different parts of the body and then how it manifests as chi. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I just share that. <laughs> yeah, thank you, bro. Um, just kind of jumping off of what, that, what you said right there. When you do that, you know, that um, um, craniosexual work, you know, you're, you're, you're directly accessing the Tai Chi pole, right? And all the chakras and that subtle pulling. And Dr. Johnson can talk about this. And we're doing medical Qigong. We gently pull the fascia. And that's why when we do the lungs, you know, we press into that area. It's mm -hmm. like, ah, the fascia can breathe again. And we're sending that loving, healing vibration. Um, and I'm going to start showing you more of the scientific research from Qi projection. And how, like, like the, the uh, anyhow, I'm getting all you know, crazy. But, um Everything that we're doing is all connected in these systems of, of holistic medicine, you know. So um, medical Qigong is, is simply a lens to continue to, uh, to look through. And um, whatever your modality may be, you know, allow yourself to uh, continue to, to weave the web, you know, and, and speak, speak that language to, to the people that we're here to serve, you know. So thanks, Adrian. Oh. Uh oh, uh -oh brother. that. Okay, it is uh, 6.32, I know, oh, Cassie, go ahead. I want to say I'm super excited because tonight is my first Immortal Warrior. Oh, yeah. Woo yeah. And I have oh. eight people. And nice. It's great. What a perfect size. Eight, uh, eight is yeah. great. Infinity. Yeah. Well, have a, have a lovely class. <laughs> yeah, plus you is nine, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and uh, oh, I'm so excited. You're going to be geeking out on the fashion. All right, everybody. <laughs> I'm, about, I'm about to geek out on the fashion. I'm yeah. going to go and fix the wire. Yeah, feel the wiring, that. the fiber axis. Okay, uh, I know it's time, so love you all very much. I'll see you guys. Um, no class Sunday. I'll see you guys next Tuesday when I get home, and I'll share the downloads from uh, being here in New Mexico. Thank you, y'all. Okay. You guys are What's such up? an amazing space. Thank you, David. Yeah, Thank you so sure. much for bringing, in, bringing this through today. Yeah, for sure. Okay, peace. Talk to y'all soon. Thank you.